my folks. In this next section, we're going to learn about geometric sequences. Earlier this year, we learned about arithmetic sequences, which were like linear functions. It was a number pattern where, you know, the pattern is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, something like that, um, where you were adding a consistent value, a common difference. With geometric sequences, instead, we're going to have a common multiplication factor, a common ratio between each pair of consecutive terms in the sequence. So the arithmetic sequences were about adding a constant value. This time, we're multiplying by a constant value. And not surprisingly, hopefully, um, this should sound like an exponential function to you. Geometric sequences do follow an exponential pattern. Um, so this is the general format we're going to use for an exponential sequence. And we'll see what um, those different values mean as, as we go through the examples. First, let's make sure we can identify a geometric sequence and differenti differentiate it from an arithmetic sequence. So geometric sequences, you're going to have a common ratio. It's going to be the value you multiply by to get the next term in the sequence. Whereas an arithmetic sequence have a common difference. It's going to be the value you add to a term to get to the next term. When you're given sequences like this, you don't have to look. These are the y values. It's assumed that the x values are 0, 1, 2, 3. There is a fixed pattern already in the x values. So we're just looking for a pattern in the y values because there already is a pattern in the x values. So hmm, what is happening here? 120 to 60, I'm subtracting 60, but I could be dividing by 2. And then here, going from 60 to 30, again, I'm not subtracting 60 because that would take me down to 0. I must be dividing by 2 again. We can check this by actually trying to find that common ratio by taking the looking at a pair of terms, taking the second term and dividing by the, the first term. So 60 divided by 120 is 1 half. So that's the multiplication factor. 30 divided by 60 is 1 half. 15 divided by 30 is 1 half. So 1 half is our common multiplication factor in this example. This is a geometric function. or a geometric sequence, I should say. Um, and the reason we know that there's it's a geometric sequence is that because we're multiplying by one half consistently every single time. By every, uh, that every time. Let's look at the next example, two to six. Well, I could be multiplying by three. Let's see what I'm doing next. Six times three is 18, and the next number is not 18. So multiplying by three is not correct. Um, let's try adding. Let's see, two, let's see, plus four is six, and then six plus four is 10. Um, this seems to be plus five, uh, 11 to 17, that's plus six. Um, I am not adding by a consistent value here. So this is not an arithmetic sequence, and we weren't multiplying by a common ratio, so this is not a geometric sequence. This is actually neither. There is a pattern here. I seem to be adding by one more each step of the way, but it's not a geometric sequence, and it's not an arithmetic sequence. Not to say that there isn't a pattern, it just doesn't follow one of those two core sequences that we've learned so far or that we're learning now. There's no common ratio, so it's not a geometric function. And there's no common difference, so this is not a, an arithmetic function. That's why it's neither. All right. Write the next three terms of each geometric sequence. So... We're already told that these are geometric sequences. How do we kind of extend the sequence to predict the next few terms? I do recommend using a table to organize the terms because it's much easier. Uh, it's neater. It's easier to see the pattern. Um, I'm told this is a geometric sequence, so I can do 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this must be multiplication by 2. And yes, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 
So we just continue along the way. What's 24 times 2? It's 48. What's 48 times 2? It's 96. What's 96 times 2? It's 192. So we can determine the next few terms just by extending the sequence, extending the pattern that we've identified. How about this example here? Um, the previous example was organized into a table for you. Um, uh, let's do, let's put, plug these values into the table ourselves. 64 is the first value, negative 16 is the second value, 4 is the third value, and negative 1 is the fourth value. What is happening here? If we go uh, from 64 to negative 16, Setting that up as a fraction, remember to take the second number and divide by the first number in any consecutive pair. Uh, that works out to be negative one-fourth. I appear to be multiplying by uh, negative one-fourth every single time. I'm multiplying by negative one-fourth. Is the same thing true here? Yes, one fourth of, of negative 16 would be negative four, but then I multiply it by the negative as well, so it becomes a positive. So this is flipping back and forth between a negative number and a positive number because I'm always multiplying by negative one fourth. Once again, this works out here. Multiplying by negative one fourth. So what happens when I continue the pattern? Um, the next one will be positive, then the sixth one will be negative, and then the seventh one will be positive. If I take negative uh, one-fourth of negative one, that gives me a uh, positive one-fourth, and then I get a negative one-sixteenth, and then I get a positive one-sixty-fourth, because I'm just multiplying by negative one-fourth every single time. Negative one-fourth, negative one-fourth. So I've extended the sequence uh, just by, by multiplying by negative one-fourth each step of the way. What happens when we graph a geometric sequence? What does it look like? Um, so this is telling us to, to kind of graph the pattern 32, 16, 8, 4, 2. Um, so 32 is the first term. This is my x value. These are my y values. Um, my second term is 16. My third term is eight, my fourth term is four, and my fifth term is two. So if I plot those on my graph here, um, when x is one, y is 32. When x is two, y is 16. When x is three, y is eight. Then four, four, then five, two. And hopefully this looks familiar to you. Hopefully that kind of curve shape, um, either downward or upward, reminds you of an exponential graph. So that is the pattern we want you to notice. Points of a geometric sequence with a positive common ratio lie on an exponential curve. They lie on an exponential curve. And I've drawn that curve in there so you, that you would recognize it as being an exponential curve. However, a sequence is a discrete function. We don't usually write, uh, we don't draw the curve between the points because uh, we don't draw the curve between the points because it's a discrete function. The sequence is only 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2 we don't hit all the values in between 32 and 16. Um, so we shouldn't really draw the curve, but I've drawn it here just so that you can see that the points do lie on that exponential curve. Let's look at uh, the next problem. We have predicted the next few terms in a geometric sequence, but what if we want to skip several? What if we want to know the hundredth term or the thousandth term in a geometric sequence? Uh, what's the procedure that we follow then? I certainly don't want to uh, just calculate the next value and calculate the next value and calculate the next value a thousand times. 
Um, so it would be helpful to be able to write an equation and then use the equation to determine the nth term of the sequence. And that's what we're doing here in this problem. We're being asked to write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence, uh, and we're given it here so that we can calculate um, the value of, of a term further on down the sequence. First, I'm going to make a table of values to help me organize the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. The first term is 2, the second term is 12, the third term is 72, and the fourth term is 432. Now, I'm already told that this is geometric, but uh, we can confirm this by looking for a common pattern because we need to know the common pattern anyway. We need to know what the common ratio is to be able to plug values into this, uh, to be able to calculate this function. So we are going to use that procedure where I look at a pair of values and I take the second term and I divide it by the first term. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I seem to be multiplying by a factor of 6 here. Let me just check uh, to make sure that works out consistently. 12 times 6 is 72 and 72 times 6 is 432. So that checks out my common ratio is 6. So that's going to be my r value here. My r in this equation is going to be 6. I want to write my geometric sequence uh, function in this format. An represents the nth term of a geometric sequence. It's kind of like my y value. I, I would just write the letter y. I'm just going to write this uh, term a to the n, uh, a sub n. A with a little one next to it is the first term of the geometric sequence. Well, my first term here was this 2. So A1 is 2. So I'll plug that in where the A1 is. And then it says A1 times R to the N minus 1 power. We already said R was 6. So I'm going to use uh, 6 as my R to the N minus 1 power. This is the correct function to express this geometric sequence, 2 times 6 to the n minus 1 power. Let's try using this equation to calculate the 10th term of the sequence. So if I want to find the 10th term in the sequence, um, I'm finding a sub 10, and that's 2 times 6 to the 10 minus 1 power. And that's going to be 2 times 6 to the ninth power, which is going to work out to be 20,155,392. So we came up with an equation for the sequence, and then we used the equation to calculate the tenth term. This can be useful in a uh, kind of real world situation. So if you've ever used uh, Google Maps or any kind of mapping website, um, you know that you, if you kind of uh, zoom in or zoom out, um, th there will be a change in the scale of the map. So if you just click on this website, if you click the zoom out button once, um, the map side length is five miles, but then if you click it twice, the map uh, the length of the map is 10 miles. And then if you click the third time, the length of the map, the side of it is 20 miles. So I'm being asked after how many clicks, how many clicks is it going to take for the side length of the map to be 640 miles? The easiest way to figure this out is to um, come up with a function and then see when my function equals 640 miles. So let's do that. Um, remember when you we write a sequence, we want to have the format a sub n equals the first term times our uh, common ratio to the n minus 1 power. And my starting term in this sequence is 5. Um, I'm leaving a n alone, just like I would the y value in an equation. Um, 
Now, my common ratio, I need to find out what's happening to this value each step I take in the sequence. And I seem to be multiplying by 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 times 2 is 20. So my R value, my common ratio, is 2. So my, uh, my A1, my first term was 5, and my R value is 2. So I'll have 2 is my base to the n minus 1 power. And now I have an equation to help represent this mapping website. But I want to know when does this equal 640? When does 5 times 2 to the n minus 1 equal 640? I would really like to get n all by itself. Um, that's a little tricky to do right now because in Algebra 1 we haven't learned all the math that we need to do to get it by itself, but we can simplify this and then kind of go from there. So my first step is going to be to divide both sides by 5 because if I'm trying to get the n by itself, I need to get rid of any uh, addition, subtraction first, then multiplication, division. Uh, this particular subtraction is inside of an exponent, so that's going to be... Uh, um, further down the road, but I divide both sides by 5. Um, the, the 5 on the right-hand side cancels out, and 640 divided by 5 is 128. And now I have that equals 2 to the n minus 1. Now, because we do not know how to do logarithms yet, we cannot directly solve for n. But what we can do, and this is a useful skill, this comes up a lot on the ACT, actually. So this is a good ACT skill. Um, we're going to take this 128 and figure out and try to write it as 2 to the power of something. So I want to know 2 to what power equals 128. And so if I just mess around my calculator, it'll few times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, just kind of see what gets me there. I see that 2 raised to the 7th power is 128. And remember, that's just the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, I ha still have 2 to the n minus 1. Now that I have this scenario, 2 to the 7th equals 2 to the n minus 1, I see that 7 must equal n minus 1. Because I was able to get the bases the same on both sides of the equation, I now have an equation that's easy to solve directly versus learning about logarithms, but which we haven't learned yet. So we'll add one to both sides of the equation, and I can see that n must equal 8. So it would take 8 clicks of the mouse to get to that 640 miles on one uh, side length of the square map. I hope this helps.